great news. With Trinidad Fresh, you get 70% real fruit juice. And it's available in Fruit Punch, Orange, and Apple. Drink, drink, drink Trinidad Fresh. IBN can be viewed on the go now with the Airlink TV app for Google devices. Simply go to the Google Play Store, search for the Airlink TV app, download the app, click on the link and fill out the form. The account activation will be emailed or texted to the user. It's safe as no credit card is needed. The first 30 days are free and you can subscribe and receive a box for your TV to stream the same content. Good evening, assalamu alaikum, and welcome to Sea Results on IBN TV as well as the IBN TV Facebook page and the Sea Results Facebook page. I am Sir Ijaz and I'm welcoming you today to our final episode of this season. All right, we know that the month of Ramadan is approaching, and in a couple of weeks, in a couple of weeks' time, all the programming in IBN is going to be reflecting uh, that very sacred and special month to all of us Muslims throughout the world. And as they prepare, you know, we have to say goodbye to you. But it's not going to be goodbye forever. We look forward to seeing you in the next season. But, you know, before we do that, we have these two hours to spend with you. And we have a lot of interesting things to do. Uh, but we're going to begin, as we do, with our mathematics on a Thursday. And I'm actually going to do uh, something a bit similar to what we do on a Monday. Right? We're going to look at all of the top performing students over the course of this entire season. Okay? We're going to look for and see how many students were able to get, you know, total in both math and English language arts in a given week. Um, and several students were able to achieve that, and some of them did it over and over and over again, and we're just going to, you know, take a moment to recognize them, right? And this is not to detract from the work that everyone, everybody else has been doing, all right? It's all a form of encouragement, um, and it's just our way of, you know, saying thank you to those students who worked extra hard. But we know all of you are working hard, and we, we expect you to continue working hard with us. Because guess what? Our Edmodo page is going to remain active after the end of today's program. You can continue to join us on Edmodo. And those of you who are there, right, and those who aren't, this is the access code. You download the Edmodo app or you visit edmodo.com. And you will get access to all of our quizzes, which we will continue to roll out on a week-by-week -week basis. And we'll also be reopening all of our previous quizzes during this time. Maybe not all at once, but they will be reopened. And of course, um, you are going to be able to visit our YouTube channel or our Facebook page. Go to the Videos tab, search on the YouTube um, search bar for whatever topics that is tested on those quizzes, and you will find the content that is going to help you to do those quizzes, right? Just remember that the quizzes are like an exam. Once you begin the quiz, you are given a limited time 
um, and within which to complete it. You can't leave and come back. You have to commit to doing it, just like an exam. So once you're ready to do your exam, you know, you review the content and you, you feel like you're ready to take the test that pertains to that particular topic. You set aside your 10 to 20 minutes, which is the average time for the quizzes on Edmodo that we give, and you, you know, put in the work, concentrate for those minutes. And if you get anything wrong, the right answers will be provided for you. As well, um, Ms. Nyla and myself, we are active on the Edmodo app. And you can always message with questions on any topics that is giving you difficulty. But we like to ask you actually to post it within the wider group because we have many students there who are eager and willing to help students who might not um, you know, be as uh, competent or as on top of things as they are. And we give them a chance to help each other out. And then we moderate and say, you know, this was the right solution or, or, or otherwise, okay? So we welcome you to, to our community. We know that a lot of you are only now joining us a few weeks ago since the um, closure of school. But you know, we, we are here for you and you can access all of our content and be a part of our community. So I'm just gonna you know, scroll through these names. We have about 36 students who were able to get total uh, marks in English language arts and mathematics um, over the course of this season from November 25th until today. All right, so we begin with Nihan Abdul, Aziza Alexander, Angelina Andrews, who, got, who was able to achieve this a total of five times, right? Tiana Andrews, Joshua Barrow, and Alian Balfour. And Joshua Barrow is someone that calls us all the, all the time. You know, he was able to get total three times throughout the season in both subjects. Right, we have Cristiano Barrington, Shauna Brave Boy, Dominique Brown, Vinaya Davy Singh, Khalif Dowden, and Myron Diaz. Right, we are only about 10 students in so far. Congrats again to all of these people. Um, we have Sebastian Eccles, who did it four times, and Ishan Gangaram, who was able to get total in both math and English in a given week for six times. So that's amazing, Ishan, Sebastian, and all of you people who we call repeat offenders, right? But you are offended, you're not really offending, you're doing the right thing, of course. Um, we have Michael George, Jaden Gustav, Rocco Gunmetal, Jadel Henry. We have Zaria James, Aditya Joseph, Andyan Joseph, Chloe Lashley, Shania Martin, Rhea McNichols, right? Congratulations to all of you again, some of you were able to repeat, Zaria went and did the three-peat, right? Three times she was able to achieve full marks in both English, language arts, and mathematics. So congrats to all of you here on this, on this list, right? We continue with Amara Mohammed, Shiraz Mohammed, Samir Mustafa, David Pascal, Shane Ramjit, who was able to do it three times, Jasana Ramuta, congratulations again to all of you. And thank you for being with us and for working so diligently um, at our quizzes every week. We continue with Nicholas Rampasad, Antonia Raphael, Devon Powder, and Faye Rambaran, who were able to achieve that twice. Jaden Rosales and Joseph Ross. Congratulations again to all of you. So you all are noticing that we have a lot of very bright students here on C results, right? And, and we hope that we have contributed in some small way to your you know, ability and to your knowledge and the ability to apply that knowledge as well. Um, we also like to congratulate Caitlin Sunarine, who was able to do this five times to achieve total in ELA and mathematics. And mind you, um, Caitlin is a standard four student, so hats off to you, Caitlin. Um, Jonathan Sinanan, Sydney Slater, Ebenezer Smart, Shannon Sitahal, and Tyreek Vincent, all of those people were able to get total in both ELA and maths, at least on one occasion, right? And then we also have, finally, um, Zachary Xavier. So well done, guys. Congratulations to you all. And, you know, every week we also featured an honorable mentions list where, where we had students who just missed out by a mark in either ELA or mathematics. And we have some people who appear there almost every week as well, right? They may not have been able to get um, total in both on any given week, but they, they achieved very near to that consistently. 
all right? And we had many people who joined them, you know, now and then in between. You go up, you go down sometimes, but at the end of the day, we commend the effort, right? It's all about the effort, not necessarily the one who will, you know, always win the prize, but the person that puts in the effort will continue to improve, okay? And that's what we want, consistent improvement from all of you. So just to summarize, you know, I'm just gonna highlight the persons who, who did, you know, these repeat offenses uh, more than the rest, all right? We have Ishan Gangaram who did a uh, total in English and mathematics on six separate occasions. So Ishan, I hope your parents are very proud of you. Um, our guardians, Caitlin and Angelina Andrews were able to get total marks on five separate occasions in both ELA and mathematics. And then we have Alian Balfour and Sebastian Eccles who were able to get total on four separate occasions in both ELA and mathematics, all right? So hats off to all of you, right? Um, I actually recently found out because of what we're going to be doing in the second hour, right? We, have, we had students enter some very interesting pieces of writing for us this week that we'll tell you more about. So I, can, I know for a fact now that Alian Balfour is from Tobago, right? And I found out that we have a lot of students um, who are tuning in and joining us from our sister Isle of Tobago. We love to have you with us. Welcome all of you in Tobago. A huge shout out to you and to everybody here in Trinidad. We've also noticed that, you know, students are writing in, students are working with us from basically every corner of Trinidad as well as Tobago. So thank you so much, guys, for being on this journey with us in this first season. You are the reason we do what we do, all right? So congratulations to you and to your parents, guardians, siblings, and everyone who's helping you at home. And who knows, maybe when the exam is written, we might have a, a SEA or a C result student or two in that top 100, all right? So we look forward to hearing from you, of course. Whenever the SEA exam does come around and you receive your results, don't forget to give us a shout when you get your results, whatever your results are, right? You, you, will, you can share it with us and we will celebrate you here on C results. So let's do some mathematics now, right? Before we get into the fun stuff in the second half of the program, all right? I'm, I don't have a lot of mathematics to do with you today. I'm just gonna finish um, the questions that I started on Monday. And once we're done with that, we'll begin reading your creative writing submissions. And this week's creative writing submissions are not the typical ones that we do on, the week, on a week to week basis, all right? It's something very, very different and something that we hope all of you viewers enjoy you know, here with us on our final episode of the season. So don't go anywhere, you're really going to enjoy it, I'm sure. All right, there's lots to be learned as well, to be learned. You know, our students are going to be doing some teaching today. Good, so we're gonna open up our lines and we are gonna deal with these final um, consumer arithmetic questions today. Um, the, those are the numbers there on our screen. There are eight questions. So, you know, if you wanna get in, you have to be calling right now. So we are here in the strand number. Remember, we remind you every week there are four strands. We have number measurement, geometry, and statistics. Number has the most questions and we happen to be doing some consumer arithmetic questions right now. So what is that first question? Farmer David bought 100 mangoes for $350. He wants to sell them to make a profit of $150. He discovers that 20 of the mangoes were rotten. At what price must he sell each of the remaining mangoes to get the same profit? All right, I'm gonna take a caller. Good afternoon, caller. Welcome to See Results on IBN TV. Hi, good afternoon, caller. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, and who am I speaking with? This is Sydney. Hey, welcome, Sydney. Thank um, you. How are you doing today? I'm good. All right, thank you for your tribute on the Edmodo Group. We, we shared it on our social media platforms, right? Yes. All right, great. So what are your thoughts for this um, question, Sydney? Um. So he wants to make a profit of $150. Yes. So in total, he wants to make $500. 
Okay, so he bought it for three fifty, and he wants to make a profit of one fifty. So the cost yeah. price plus the profit will give us our selling price of five hundred dollars, right? Yeah. All right. So so far so good. That would be the selling price of all of the oranges. Sorry, the mangoes. But how many mangoes does he have to sell in order to achieve this this um, price here? Um, eighty. 80 because he discovered that 20 of them were rotten, right? Yeah. So he started with 100, and 20 of those mangoes were rotten. So now he has to sell 80, 80. of those mangoes to get $500 in revenue. So how much does he have to sell one mango for to get that Sydney? Okay. dollars and 25 cents all right excellent so it's six and a quarter dollars or six dollars and 25 and cents excellent work sydney thank you so much for calling yeah. all right guys so let's just um explain this over for those of you you know who we might have gone a little too quickly for so we have here a farmer who bought 100 mangoes at 350 dollars good and he wants to sell them in order to make a profit of $150. And he discovers that 20 of the mangoes were rotten. At what price must he sell the remaining mangoes to get the same profit? So he spent $350 and he wants to make $150 in profit. Therefore, he has to sell these mangoes for $500. Now, he wants to make that profit regardless of how many mangoes uh, are good and how many aren't, right? So 20 of these mangoes were rotten. So we subtract those 20 from the 100 that he bought, and we end up with 80, 80 mangoes. And in order to sell those 80 mangoes uh, for $500, right, he has to sell them at six and a quarter or $6.25 per mango, right? So I hope that that one is clear to all of our viewers. Let's move on now to another question. Okay. So Javid sold his guitar for $550 and incurred a loss of $180. At what price should he have sold the guitar to get a profit of $180? Good afternoon. Welcome to See Results on IBM TV. Hello. Hi, good afternoon. And who am I speaking with? Javan. Hey, welcome, Javan. How are you doing today? Fine, sir. So what are your thoughts for this question, Javan? Okay, so it's a zoom in on the question, please. Sure. Okay, so since they said that's how he sold his guitar for $550 and incurred a loss of $180, you have to find how much, how much money he sold his guitar for. Right. So you have to say 500, uh, I mean the cost price of the guitar. Excellent, the cost price, good. Uh, so you have to say 550 add 180. Yeah. To give you 730 dollars. Right, 730 dollars. Right, and if you want to find the profit, yeah. Yeah. I mean, if you want to find the price, you should have sold the guitar to get a profit of one hundred and eighty dollars. Uh huh. You have to see seven hundred and thirty add one hundred and eighty. All right. To give you nine hundred and ten dollars. Nine hundred and ten dollars. All right. That is absolutely right, Javen. Okay, so. Thank you so much for your help. Yes, sir. All right, so let's just remind you guys that 
we have a situation here where a loss was made, right? He sold a guitar for $550 and incurred a loss of $180, right? Let's double check that, yes. $550 was the selling price and he incurred a loss of $180. Now, when we incur a loss and we have to get the cost price, we're going to take that selling price and add the loss to it, good? So the cost price is the selling price, in this case, $550, plus the loss, which was $180. So when we add the loss to the selling price, we get $730 as the cost price of the guitar. In other words, that is how much he paid for the guitar. Right? But now we want to know how much he should have sold the guitar for to get a profit of $180. And when we have a profit being made, the selling price is the cost price plus the profit. Good? So we have the cost price already, which is $730. And we have the profit that he would like to make, which is $180. And we add that and we get a total of $910. So if he had sold this guitar for $910, he would have made a profit of $180 instead of making a loss of $180 when he sold it for $550, right? So hopefully that one is clear to all of you out there. Thank you so much, Javan. That is, in fact, the correct approach for this question. So what do we have next? We have Caitlin parks her car in a car park from 8.30 a.m. to 2.15 p.m. The car park charges $15 for every hour or any part thereof. How much change would Caitlin receive if she paid with a $100 bill? Good afternoon, Kuala. Welcome to See Results on IBN TV. Hi, hello. Hey, welcome, Nicholas. How are Hi. you doing today? I'm fine, thanks. All right, thank you for tuning in for the final episode of this season, right? Yeah, I just want to say I will, I will miss you, you know. I will. We will miss you too, Nicholas. I will miss you too, for sure. Yeah, me too. All right, so let's get working. Yes, So um, they say um, they say she falls from uh, she falls from eight thirty to two fifteen, right? So you yeah. have to find how much how much she how much spend. So what we have to do, we have to say. Um, we need to change two fifteen to fourteen fifteen, subtract eight thirty, and I'll just just give me a sec. I just working it out. Sure. All right. So um, she spent five hours and thirty minutes, right? So what is um, any part thereof means like if I spent um, 30 minutes, I would have to pay the $15. So you have to count the 30 minutes as a, um, six hours. So we say 15, right? 15 by six hours, and that will give it $90. It's a cost, right? So how she has to owe the car park. And if they say she owe, she pay her $100 bill, you have to say 100 take away 90 and you get $10. Excellent. So she received $10 change. But you just made one error, Nicholas. Although you arrived at the right answer, she actually was parked for 5 hours and 45 minutes, right? Yeah. If we borrow one from the 14 here, we add 60 to 15, which would give us 75. Five. And we take um, 30 away from 75, we get 45 minutes, okay? So she was parked for five hours and 15 minutes. You seeing that? Yeah, I seen it now. All right. I forgot to add it. All right, that's okay. But but you are aware that she had to pay for the entire hour, so I'm happy about that. Okay, all right. All right, Nicholas, you take care. All right, you too. All right, guys, so that's Nicholas there. I'm sending us off with a bang there. Um, so I'm just going to recap again. You can see how easy it is to make an error with a question like this where time is involved. All right. So Caitlin pays, or sorry, parks her car from 8.30 a.m. to 12 to 2.15 p.m. And the car park charges 15 for every hour. Or very importantly, 
any part thereof, right? That is why Nicholas told us that she has to pay for that final hour. So how much would Caitlin receive if she paid with a $100 bill? So we're doing, we're subtracting time here. And um, we have one, the, the beginning time in the morning and the afternoon time, time out in the afternoon, right? Time in in the morning, time out in the afternoon. So we're going to convert that afternoon time to 24-hour format so that it will be easier to subtract. All right, so we do so by adding 12 to the 2, and we get 14, 15, right? So we have 14, 15, subtract 8, 30, which is the time that uh, Caitlin parked her car. So we can't take 15 from 30, all right? We can't take 15 from 30 here. So we're going to borrow an hour, okay? We're going to borrow an entire hour from the 14. So that leaves us with 13 hours. And one hour is equal to 60 minutes. So therefore, we add 60 to 15, and we get 75. And now we can proceed with our subtraction, and we will get um, 0 from 5 is 5, 3 from 7 is 4, and 8 from 13 is 5. So Caitlin was there for a total of 5 hours and 45 minutes. Good, but she has to be... $15 per hour or any part thereof. This is 45 minutes, so this is certainly part of another hour, a very significant part, might I add, but it doesn't matter. Even if she stayed one minute over the, the fifth hour, then she will have to pay for that sixth hour according to this clause here, right? Any part thereof. So we're going to round it up to six hours now, and she will therefore have to pay 15 multiplied by six for a total of $90, but the question didn't ask only that, right? The question asked, actually, um, if she paid with a $100 bill, how much change would she receive? And we therefore then have to just take away the $90, which is the amount owed from the 100 that she paid, and you'll get $10 in change, all right? So that is how you approach this type of question, and that is, our, and that is the final answer for this question, $10. Good? Thank you so much again, Nicholas. So here we have another question um, that I'm just going to recap something before I take this call, right? So Mr. Christopher pay, must pay uh, VAT value added tax of 12.5% on the discounted price of the guitar shown below, good? So the marked price of the original price here is $600, good? And there's a discount of 20%. But we want to know the final price um, after the discount, but including VAT. All right? So just to remind you, right, the discount, a discount is a reduction in the original or regular price of an item. Good? And it's usually, or it can be given as a percentage. In this case, we have it given as 20%. And we note that the original price is always 100%. Good? And we remind you, that taxes or value added taxes are tax added to the cost of certain goods or services as a means of government revenue and in Trinidad and Tobago, that currently stands at 12.5% or 12.5%. And we showed you that 12.5% is the same as 1.8, right? 12.5% is the same as 12.5%. Um, 12.5% means 12.5 divided by 100. Divide by 100 means we move that decimal place two places to the left. So we get 0 0.125, which is the same as 125 over 1,000, right? Which will be reduced to 1 eighth, right? So it's easier to think of the VAT in terms of a fraction than to think of it in terms of a decimal for most people, all right? So we just say that um, memorize that 12 and a half percent is the same as one eighth. So with all that in mind, let's see what we can do for this question here now. Good afternoon, caller. Welcome to see results on IBN TV. Hi, good afternoon, caller. Hi, caller. Good day. Hi. Hi, good afternoon. And who am I speaking with? Kara. Welcome, Kara. So, Kara, what are your thoughts for this question here? 
Well, first we'll have to find a discount. Right. Which is 120, and then you'll have to subtract that from 600, which is 480. Okay, so 20% of 600 is, is how much? 120? Yes. All right. Let's just double check that. Yes, and you are correct. It's 120. Then you will subtract it from 600. Right. So the discounted price is? The discounted price is 480. Excellent. $480. Yeah. And 12 and a half is 1.8. So you'll find 1.8 of $480. Yeah. Which is $60. Sixty dollars. Yes. All right. Fair enough. So that is sixty dollars in VAT. And then you will add it to the four hundred and eighty dollars. Okay. And you will get five hundred and forty dollars. Excellent. And you are absolutely correct, Kara. That is the answer. Five hundred. I just want to say thank you for helping me join school because I've come a long way from where I was. Well, we are very, very, very elated to hear that, Kara. You are most welcome, and we thank you for being with us. All right. Welcome. All the best going forward in your exams and in your education. So. Thank you. All right. You're welcome. So, Kara, there. Very sweet. She just gave us the correct answer and the correct steps that we have to take to find this answer. And again, as we, as we like to do, we like to recap to make sure everybody is on the same page, right? So we have here an item, a guitar, that Mr. Christopher must pay VAT on, right? 12.5% on the discounted price, okay? On the discounted price of the guitar shown below. And the price, the marked price is 600, and the discount is 20%. So we find 20% of 600, which is $120. That is the discount, that is not the discounted price. So we have to then take away the discount, right? Take the discount away from the marked price, or the original price, and that will give us our discounted price of $480, good? And now we have to pay VAT on this discounted price. And like we said before, the VAT is 1 eighth, right, of the price. So we find 1 eighth of $480, which is $60. And then we add the VAT to the discounted price, which gives us finally $540. And I'll just remind you, as I did in the last program, that we are, the original price is always 100%. So if we are given a discount of 20%, that means that we are actually paying 80% of the price. Good? So we could have found 80% of 600, and 80% of 600, you can work it out at home, will take you directly to $480. Good, you put 80 over 100 and multiply it by 600, you will get $480. And this now becomes um, our new total. And if we found 9 eighths of $480, in other words, we added the 1 eighth to the, to the full price, which is 1, we'll get 9 over 8. And we find 9 over 8 of $480, and that will give you $540 directly. And if you want some further explanation on that, um, you can look at our very last episode, the previous episode, which was on, um, well, actually, no, the uh, Monday's episode, which is when we did maths last. You look at Monday's episode and you will get the full breakdown on the discount and the VAT and how to get the discounted price directly, okay, by just subtracting the discount percentage from 100 and then multiplying and how to get the price, the VAT inclusive price, um, without finding one eighth and then adding it, right? We multiply instead by nine eighths, right? We have a full uh, detailed explanation of that on Monday's episode, which would have been season one, episode 52, 
or if you're on Facebook, just scroll to the date of Monday, which would have been the sixth, I believe, all right? So with that, we're gonna take a break for about two minutes, and when we return, we'll work the rest of our math questions before we get into our creative writing a little bit um, later on, all right? So we'll be back in a couple of minutes, guys. Don't go anywhere. Good afternoon, assalamu alaikum, and welcome back to Series Results on IBN TV, as well as the IBN TV Facebook page and the Series Results Facebook page. I am Sir Ijaz, and we are currently in the middle of some mathematics here um, on our final episode of Series Results for this season. Good, so let's have a look at this question. Jonathan purchased three different items from the menu below with a $100 bill, right? So he purchased three items from this menu. We have fried rice for $25, chicken at $30, salad for $15, and macaroni pie for $20. Which items did Jonathan buy so that he received more than $30 change, all right? So a very interesting question. Good afternoon, caller. Welcome to see results on IBN TV. Hi, good afternoon, caller. Hello. Hi, good afternoon. And who am I speaking with? Devante. Welcome, Devante. How are you doing today? I'm good. All right. So what are your thoughts for this question, Devante? So since we said that how Jonathan wants to receive more than $30 change, I will subtract 100 I'll, I'll subtract 30 from $100, and it will get 70 Still know that how he must spend he must spend below seventy dollars. All right, so far so good. And then I will do different combinations. So since you push us three different items from the menu, mm -hmm. I will choose um the salad. Right. The chicken, which is forty five dollars. Okay. And then the macaroni pie, which is twenty, and it'll get sixty five dollars, which is less than seventy dollars. Right. So he will get thirty five dollars change instead of thirty. Excellent. So chicken, salad and macaroni pie, and he will receive thirty five dollars change, right? Yes. Okay. Excellent work, Devante. Thank you so much. You're welcome. All right, so I'm just going to explain this, and I'm going to take another caller because we have another possibility here, right? I'm sure some of you at home might have noticed that as well. So Jonathan purchased three different items from the menu, right? So that means he can't buy two fried chickens or, or sorry, two chickens and, or two fried rice or anything like that. He has to buy one in each, right? But three items in total, and he pays with $100. But we want to know which three items he can buy 
so that he receives more than $30 change. And as Devante just pointed out to us, um, in order for him to receive more than uh, $30 change, he has to spend less than $70, all right? If he spends $70, sorry, less than, yes, less than $70, because if he spends 70 he's going to get exactly $30 change, but we want him to get more than $30 change. So he has to spend anything less than $70. And Devontae identified three items here, the chicken and the salad and the macaroni pie. So the chicken and the salad gives us $45 added to 20. That costs $60 in total. So that is one combination where he will receive um, more change than $30. He will actually receive $35 change with this combination. So what is the next combination? Let's take a caller. Good afternoon, caller. Welcome to see results on IBN TV. Hi, good day. Hi, good day. And who am I speaking with? Jaden. Hey, welcome, Jaden. So, Jaden, what are your thoughts for this question? Um... Uh, that. So we had one combination here, chicken, salad, and macaroni pie costing $65, right? Which is less yes. than 70. We want our next combination, any three items that will cost less than $70. Fried rice. Fried rice. Salad. Salad. And macaroni pie. Exactly. And how much would that cost? Those three items together. Sixty dollars. Sixty dollars. Very good. Twenty-five and fifteen is forty, and twenty is sixty dollars. And therefore, how much um, how much change would he receive with this combination? Forty dollars. Right. Great. Which is less than seventy, right? So yeah. thank you so much, Jaden, for your contribution. Yeah. That is absolutely right. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. All right, guys. So we have two combinations here um, of three items that where we will get more change than $30. The chicken, the salad, the macaroni pie, or um, the fried rice, the salad, and the macaroni pie. So we have an option for the meat eaters and the non-meat eaters, right? So... Let's see what other question we have now. Jada Marie bought three kilograms of shrimp and three kilograms of lamb. Um, she spent a total of $62.70. One kilogram of shrimp costs $9.75. What is the cost of one kilogram of lamb? All right. So let's see who can tackle this one. Good afternoon, caller. Welcome to see results on IBN TV. Good day. Hi, good day. And who am I speaking with? Um, Nikolai Raymond. Welcome, Nikolai. How are you doing? I'm fine. All right, Nikolai. So what are your thoughts for this question here? Okay, so first we have to multiply $9.75 by 3 because it's 3 kilograms of strength. All right. That will be... Um, hold on, I'm going to think yeah. about. Take your time. Yes, yes. Um, no, five by two. Uh, $29.25. Excellent, $29.25. And this is for the shrimp, right? Yes. All right, so what is the next step now? So we need to take away $29.25 from $62.70. All right. That will be for $33.45. $33.45. All right, yes. that's excellent. And this is for what? This is for three kilograms of... Pardon? This thirty-three forty-five is to pay for what? That is for the um. Can I go back to the screen, please? All right. 
Um, just so that is for. Um, that is for the lamb. Right, and but how much lamb? Three kilograms. Excellent, but we want to get the price of. One, One kilogram. kilogram. So, so you need to divide mm -hmm. 33 dollars and 45 cents by three. Very good. And you will get 11 dollars and 15 cents. 11 dollars and 15 cents. 15 cents. Per kilogram of lamb, right? Yes. All right. Excellent work, Nicolai. You are absolutely correct. Yes. Thank All you. All right. Take care. Yeah. All right. So eleven dollars and fifteen cents per kilogram of lamb. Now this one had a fair bit of calculations in it, so we're going to run it through once more. All right. So we have Jada Marie. She bought three kilograms of shrimp and three kilograms of lamb. Okay, and she spent a total of sixty-two dollars and seventy cents. And we are told that one kilogram of shrimp costs $9.75. And we want to figure out what is the cost of one kilogram of lamb. Good, so we have the total amount of money spent, which was $62.70. And we know the price for one of the items that she bought, which was shrimp. Okay, but she bought three kilograms of that shrimp, and we have the price for just one kilogram of shrimp. So therefore, we have to find out how much money she spent in total on shrimp. So we take the unit price, which is $9.75, and we multiply that by three, and we get $29.25 spent for the shrimp. Good? And she spent $62.70 in total, right? And what else did she buy? She also bought three kilograms of lamb, right? And we need to find for one kilogram of lamb. So first we must find out how much she spent on those three kilograms of lamb. So we subtract the the cost of the shrimp from the cost, the total bill, which was $62.70, and we get $33.45 for those three kilograms of lamb. And now to find for one kilogram, we just have to divide by three because we bought, or she bought, three kilograms, good? So we divide $33.45 by three, and we get $11.15 per kilogram of lamb, and that is the up the correct answer for this question as Nikolai just guided us to. So we have here now a table to complete, right? We have the number of items, we have the cost, and we have the total cost of the items, and some, some um, elements of the table are missing. So let's get some help now from a caller. Uh, good afternoon, caller. Welcome to see results. Hi, good evening. This is Nicholas again. Hey, welcome back, Nicholas. Yes, hi. Okay, um, for number, for the first question, right? Yeah. So the cost per apple, right, is $5.50. So the total cost, right, of the items for apples, right, we multiply by 10. And we all know when we multiply by 10, we move the point, the decimal point, one place to the right, and we get $55 for the apples, right? Excellent, $55 for the apples. Okay, good. So now... Number part B, they say three pence for nine dollars, right? Uh -huh. So we need to find for the cost of one, and that will give give, give you three dollars per pair. And if right. the total cost is, is eighty-one, we need to divide that by three, and we get twenty-seven pairs. Excellent, twenty-seven pairs. Yes. Okay. Good. So now, just part C, ask for the the cost, right? So they say twelve oranges for. For um, seventy-eight dollars, right? Yes. So we all we need to do, we, we divide. So we say seventy-eight over twelve, and we can say six can go into twelve two, six can go into seventy-eight thirteen times, and get two over thirteen over two. And when you convert that into dollars and cents, you get sixty dollars, six dollars and fifty cents per orange. Six dollars and fifty cents. Yeah, per orange. All right, excellent work, Nicholas. You're absolutely correct. Okay, you're you're welcome, and stay safe, eh, sir. You too, Nicholas. Okay, all right. All right. So, Nicholas reminding us, reminding me and you, the nation, that we need to stay safe in these times, and he is very correct about that, in addition to being correct about this question here. So let's just break this down a little bit. You know, Nicholas's speed is very quick, so some of you out there might not have caught everything that he said. So let's break it down. We have 10 apples, 
and the cost of one apple is five dollars and fifty cents we want to know the total cost of those apples and as nicholas rightly said when we are multiplying by 10 we move the decimal place one one spot to the right good so we have five dollars and fifty cents and we move that point one to the right we're going to get 55 dollars as the total cost for the apples and he took this approach for line b right three pairs cost nine dollars and therefore one pair would cost nine divided by three which is three dollars for one pair and the total cost of pairs that were bought here on this on this table um, is 81 dollars so if we divide 81 by three we're going to get 27 pairs all right make sure and try that division at home it's a simple division 3 into 81 you're going to get 27 and then finally we have 12 oranges sold at some price per orange but the total amount is 78 dollars so we have 78 divided by 12 good and we can you know break this down as nicola said 12 would go into this once and it would go into here six times uh, yes 12 sixes are 72 And we're going to get a remainder of 6 over 12, which can be reduced to 6 and a half, right? And we know that 6 and a half, half of a dollar is 50 cents. So we get $6.50 per orange. That is absolutely correct, Nicholas. So we'll move on now to one Final question here we have for mathematics today. Um, Joshua purchased a cell phone for $695. He used the bills shown in the table below. And Joshua used an equal number of $50 and, and $10 bills to pay for the cell phone. What is the total value of the $50 bills he used in his purchase? Good afternoon, caller. Welcome to See Results on IBN TV. Results Hello. Hi, good afternoon. Good afternoon. And who am I speaking with? What did you say? Who am I speaking with? Alexi. Sorry, repeat that? Alexi. Okay, welcome. Welcome to the program. So, what are your thoughts for this question? So, first of all, I'll multiply 100 by 4. Yeah. Which is 400. All right. And I'll multiply 20 by 5, which is 100. Very good. Uh, and after that, I'll multiply 5 by 3, which is 15. Great. Dollars. Yeah. After, after, add up all, i uh, get the total of $515. Very good. Then I minus it from the $695. Yes. And then uh, add 50, 50 plus the 10, uh, that's 60. You didn't tell me how much is $695, take away $515. Oh, sorry. One eighty. One hundred and eighty dollars, good. Right, so you are saying after add fifty plus ten, I uh, got sixty dollars. Right. Then I divide it by the one eighty and you'll get thirty. You get thirty dollars. Yeah. Thirty dollars? Yes, sir. All right. Uh, no. Eight. Well, we got three, right? Yeah, three. Good. Sorry. So, in other words, not three dollars, but we had three of each. Three fifty dollar notes and three and ten dollar notes, right? 
Mm -hmm. Very good. And the question wants to know, what is the total value of the $50 bill he used? So what would that total value be? 180 No. The $50 bills alone. Oh, 150 Very good. So and the, the tons will be $30. All right. But, the, and, but remember, the question specifically asked for the $50 bills alone, right? That's it. Right. But well done. Well done, um, Alexi. Thanks, sir. Okay, take care. All right, so this question, you know, it can be a bit of a, a mental juggle here. So let's just have a look. So Joshua purchased a cell phone for $695, and he used all of these bills here that are shown, right? He used hundreds, he used fifties, twenties, tens, and fives. And in total, he spent $695 on this cell phone. So we want to figure out what the total value of the $50 bills he used in his purchase with the, with the knowledge that he used an equal number of $50 and $10 bills. All right, so we have to figure out what, what amount um, the rest of bills make up from the 695. So we have 400s, which is $400, pretty straightforward. We have 520s, which is $100. And we have three fives, which is $15. And when we add those together, four plus one is 500. And we add 15 to it, we're gonna get $515 spent in those bills, right? So we subtract 515 from 695 and we get $180 that was spent between the 50 and the $10 notes or bills. Now, we are told that Joshua used an equal number of $50 and $10 bills. So if we add the 50 and the 10 together, we are going to get $60, right? So each time he spends $60, he is going to be spending, in, in effect, one $50 bill and one $10 bill. So if we divide that balance, which is $180, we divide that by $60, it means that he would have used three $50 notes and three $10 notes. Yes, three $10 notes. Good. And the question wants to know the value, the total value of the $50 bills he used. Right? Very explicitly says that. So therefore, we just have to multiply now 50 by three, and we are going to get $150 as the total value of the $50 notes, all right? And that is our final answer for that question, all right? So that was our final question for mathematics today, all right? And we're gonna be moving on to our next segment at 6 um, p.m., but before I go, before I take a final break, um, I just wanna say, uh, before we begin, because the rest of this segment is going to be dedicated um, totally to stuff that you, the student, are sent in. All right, you are going to be taking center stage. We gave you a very, a very unique, very peculiar um, creative writing exercise, a bit different to what you would have been doing over the past um, several months with us. All right, so this one is really creative. It's all about your creativity, and it's going to be for a particular purpose. Um, for our viewers, right, for our audience. But you know, I just wanna say, before we move on to that segment, you know, on behalf of myself, as well as Ms. Nyla, who will be joining us very shortly, thank you to um, IBN TV, all right, to Mr. Inshan Ishmael for giving us this opportunity to create his, his dream, you know, of, sh of spreading this free SEA lessons to the, the students of Trinidad and Tobago, to the people of Trinidad and Tobago, all right, we know that it's something very stressful for parents. Sometimes it's very difficult, it's very demanding for people to have to pay for extra lessons, to make time, to drop off, to pick up, and so on. So, you know, we wanted, we wanted to bring, bring it home to you, you know, and that was his vision, and he actually asked us to help him, and, you know, we think, well, we hope that we have done justice here 
and this first season for you, the viewers. All right, it was our you know, absolute pleasure being here with you and doing um, this task. All right, and we definitely created a great sense of community, especially on our Edmodo page, where we have students from every corner of Trinidad and Tobago, all right? And you know, it doesn't even matter students who are not, who, who do attend lessons, um, extra lessons at school and so on, they still tune into our program. Even if they don't have time to tune into the program, they watch it later on on Facebook, they watch it later on on YouTube, and they do our weekly quizzes. All right, it was our pleasure preparing all of that for you, and we definitely will be continuing with you on the Edmodo page. In these uncertain times, when we don't know where the SCA exam is going to be, we are gonna be giving you a little boost every week by giving you those quizzes, keeping you on your toes a little bit, and the lines of communication are open between you and us, all right, through our Edmodo page. The students contact us directly there. The parents, they tend to contact us through our Facebook page, which is absolutely fine. All right, and we have our YouTube channel for you to look at all of the episodes that were done, you know, inclusive of today's, all right, which will be posted within the next day or two. But all prior to today are already there on the YouTube channel and they cover almost every element of the exam, all right? And because we've been with you now since the 25th of November, and of course, all of this was made possible as well by our sponsors, all right? So we had a few sponsors along the way, and we just wanna thank them again. Um, the, the KFC, the Republic Bank, Pennywise, Extra Foods, uh, Price Club, Fair and Square, SM Jalil, Chubby, Fruta Cool Kids, all right? Thank you to all of you for your support, for supporting this program, and for helping with the education of our youth in Trinidad and Tobago. And thank you guys so much for being with us in these times, all right? Thank you so much to the production team and IBN TV as well. You know, um, Shiraz and Justin and Spongy, all right? Thank all of you guys uh, so much for your help. And don't go anywhere, guys. At 6 p.m., we are gonna be back. Miss Nyla and I are going to be telling you some more about what you guys have been up to. You know, you guys know, but the parents and the other viewers may not know that you all have some real artists here, all right? And we're gonna share your work with the nation when we return at 6 p.m., so don't go anywhere. Uh, good evening. Assalamu alaikum.